Uh, okay, so I'd like to talk to you about um, a symbol that means uh, a lot to me, means a lot in terms of the work that I do, which is related to nanoscience. And so one of the fundamental symbols, or one of the fundamental quantities related to a wave is its, its wavelength, lambda, or its frequency, nu. So that's spelt N-U. It comes from the Greek, and it's the, 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 the Greek symbol nu looks, looks like that. Oh, that again is a, another convention that these symbols have been used, alpha, beta, gamma, nu, epsilon. Um, it's historical, they've been introduced by various physicists along the way. So the other symbol that is used is, is actually F, and that's in the more recent textbooks, including our first year physics textbook, you'll see F used more, more than nu. Um, don't quite know the reason for that. I quite like new myself, but um, F is certainly used a lot more. I think perhaps the best way is if I bring out the trusty guitar here. So frequency, when I pluck this, this string, that string vibrates back and forth at a certain rate per second. There are so many vibrations per second. That sets the air molecules into motion and then they in turn vibrate back and forth and they vibrate back and forth on a radio drum. So the key thing with frequency is that's a relatively low frequency, that's a relatively high frequency and all you're doing there is changing the number of times per second that string moves up and down. You can think of it all in terms of sound waves but you can also think of it in terms of light waves. So what with, with light, light that we can see in this room or light coming from distant stars. That is actually another wave, but in this case what it is is a wave um, of, of uh, the electromagnetic field. Okay, so what you have is a f uh, basically a field that's vibrating um, back and forth. And what's interesting is in this case that the faster that field vibrates back and forth, then the you see a difference in colour. And this goes all the way, not just in terms of the, the visible spectrum that we can see where you go from red to blue. So red is a relatively low frequency, blue is a much higher frequency. But it also goes all the way down to infrared and actually down to much lower um, frequencies, all the way up to, to X-rays, which are very, very hard, very high frequency, um, lots of vibrations per second. If we place it, I guess, in the context of radio waves, where I guess people are interested, I've, I've heard of kilohertz and megahertz. Um, when we're talking about, I guess, the key thing is the is the vibrations on the atomic scale. We're talking about um, at least a million times. Um, more and a million to a billion times greater level of um, frequency. So these things are flipping back and forth very, very, very many more times a second than your conventional radio wave. The interesting thing is that the smaller you make it, the larger the frequency becomes. So if I can grab a ruler, that's yeah. um, a really useful one. Uh. So let's if we let's do a really simple demo. Um, so we've got something which here is 25 centimeters long. So if we vibrate that, we see that it oscillates, it wobbles back and forth at a few times every second, something like that. So that's its resonant frequency. That's the frequency it likes to to vibrate at. And then so if we make it a little bit shorter, say now so it's 15 centimeters, you'll see that the resonant frequency has increased. If we make it a little bit shorter still. Now we're down to nine centimeters. You can see that size out a little bit quicker but you can see that the frequency is is much is, is greater and now if you imagine trying to make that really 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 small so this was only a few um, a fraction of a millimeter you know a few tenths or a few hundreds of a millimeter then the frequency actually goes up to tens or maybe hundreds of kilohertz thousands of hertz and then if you go those extra few steps those extra few orders of magnitude as we say for powers of 10 down to the the range of the individual atoms and molecules then we're going into the terahertz regime where you've got a bit uh, sorry a million million hertz 10 to the 12 10 to the power of 12 hertz we have this picture of, of atoms and molecules being, and electrons and small particles being like billiard balls, when in fact they're not. Really at the quantum level in the, the, nano, in the nano world, what we have um, are basically matter waves. So matter stops behaving like these little billiard balls that we have this picture of in our heads and actually spread out and they have a wave associated with them. And what's remarkable is the, is the fundamental physics of waves, the same type of physics that you apply to the guitar, to a large extent, you can also apply to the, the, the um, behaviour of matter at the, at the quantum level. Up until the, the early years of the 20th century, the classical picture was that, that, that atoms is, is just a, a basically a hard particle, like a little sphere. But in fact, what it looks more like is...
a wave that looks like that. Okay, so this has it's certainly got a it's got an extent. But you can see that instead of being just one, being at one position, which we could define here, if we put x on this axis, again, so this is the position, instead of just finding the particle at one position on the x-axis, we see that it spreads out. It's got this wave-like wave -like character. For me, and I think for many um, scientists, or nanoscientists, this is one of the key iconic images, not just of, of nanoscience in the 20th century, but of science in general. It's, it's, it has really had a huge impact and um, it's incredibly visceral. It really is visceral, this particular image. What we have here, um, the work was carried out by a group in IBM Al Madden in, um, in the US. And what they've done is they've positioned 50 atoms, um, 50 ion atoms on a copper surface. So this is an underlying copper surface. And they've, they've used something we'll talk about later, I guess, a scanning tunneling microscope, which is a sharp, basically a sharp tip. You bring it in close to a surface, you move it around, and you can almost literally push these atoms around. And so they've, they've formed this ring of 50 atoms. That in itself is a wonderful feat of, of atomic scale engineering. But that's not what makes this image so beautiful. What makes this image so beautiful is that it's like you took a stone and you dropped it in the center here. And you can see these ripples of, of what are electron waves spreading out. And what it is, is it's really visual and, as I said, visceral um, evidence of the wave-like nature of the electron. Because the electrons on this particular surface spread out like a, basically like a sea of electrons. And it's, you're dropping, effectively dropping a stone into that sea of electrons. And what's remarkable is that you can use undergraduate first and second, well, second year um, undergraduate quantum mechanics to actually work out the separations of these rings, the spacings of these rings.